Welcome to Illustrated Beard, brought to you by The Fantasy Shop, best in comics and games since 1981. I'm Jason. I'm Nate. And we are going to review some comics. Justice League number 22. Why are you talking like this is inside the actor's studio? Because <laughs> I feel like being James Lipton tonight. It's in cool. Star Wars number 7, The Empire is Watching. <laughs> that was James Lipton right there. And Walking Dead volume 1, which is still relevant and awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will start here with Justice League number 22. It is the start of the Trinity War, which is a big Justice League, Justice League of America, and Justice League Dark crossover. One of the things I've been talking about all week, usually when you see multi-team crossover fighting going on, it, it never really makes any sense. But the Justice League of America is was very interesting because the team within the confines of New 52 was created to take down the Justice League. I mean, they handpicked the members of that team to match up against the members of the Justice League. Martian Manhunter for Superman and Catwoman for Batman, which doesn't really make any sense to me, but whatever. What's it doesn't fire? make any sense. Uh, no, no, I mean Catwoman, I'm sorry, you were right. Uh, it makes okay, no yeah, sense. Was, Catwoman can't take down the Batman, clearly. If she could, she would have by now. That's <laughs> true. The only character from Justice League Dark that pops up is Madame Xanadu, and we're treated to a woman who pops into her fortune-telling business. And as soon as Madame Xanadu makes contact with her, she starts to see these dark visions of a, a future where the world is decimated and the only Justice League members that we see in that decimated future are Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, which makes perfect sense that they would be the ones to survive some kind of crazy war. But, um, but so then, then we go into what's happening currently with some of these characters. A while back, Superman and Wonder Woman made an incursion into Kandak, which is Black Adams, Osiris, these people's home country and they're, the Kandakis are at war right now. Superheroes coming into their country is something that they've, they've really tried to take a hard line against. Like, you are not interfering in our business. Shazam, the new uh, Captain Marvel, they're not calling him Captain Marvel anymore, they're calling him Shazam. He's going there to spread the ashes of Black Adam, which is honorable because Black Adam was such a huge douche kind of guy and he tried to kill Shazam. What he doesn't realize, because he's actually a little kid in a grown up man's body with all these superpowers, is that it's not okay to go into Kandak if you're a superhero right now. The Justice League goes in to try to stop him, and then the Justice League of America are sent in to try to stop them. So literally all of the superheroes go to Kandak. <laughs> exactly. Essentially. And the Kandaki army is shooting at them, but suffice it to say, it's actually a legitimate reason for them to be fighting one another. Something happens that causes the Justice League of America to snap into action against the Justice League, and it works. I, I've never read any DC books other than Batman. And it's okay. I mean, it, it is, a, I guess okay is not the right word, because that's not doing enough justice. That was a moment. <laughs> <laughs> we locked eyes. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a good jumping on point. It if, absolutely is. If you know the basics about most of the characters. I, I gotta be honest, this didn't make me want to read the rest of the Trinity War, but it did make me think, okay, Justice League's not bad. To someone who knows the characters and who has been invested in the story yeah, yeah. For, for the last 21 issues, it is something that is very big. Yeah, no. something they've been no, building absolutely. to. And that's, a team book is hard to jump onto. It really they is. They tend to be. And yeah. this seems like a pretty solid issue in terms of team books. If this is a spoiler, cut this out. It made me want to read more about the question. The question has popped up in okay, previous cool. you don't have to uh, up. Justice League stories. If him, uh, Phantom Stranger, and Pandora are the central... Yeah, they're the trinity of sin. Yeah, like, I know the that. trinity war refers to those three people. Like, we see Pandora pop up in the issue, we see the Stranger, albeit briefly, we see the question very briefly, and anybody out there who was wondering if the question was still the same guy, like this this answers that. You know, he's he's still the same guy even though they've changed his origin a little bit. Written by Jeff Johns, who's great. Illustrated by Ivan Rice, who is equally amazing at what he does. Uh, Justice League 22, man, it's it's on the shelf now. Start of the Trinity War, good place to jump in. It Check is, it out. Yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> Pur Purple Darth Vader. Star Wars, number seven. To, no. Purple Darth Vader. Purple Darth Vader. Uh, which is Deep Prince's purple. latest <laughs> album. The um, it says The Empire is Watching, which if you've been reading this, you get that. Well, it takes place in between Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back, so that's the kind of tone they've been setting. Like, For those of you who have not been reading this, this is the Star Wars book that you need to pick up if you're not somebody who's reading Star Wars books. If you're just a Star Wars fan, like of the movies, movies yeah. you need to pick this up. It's one of the best Star Wars comics I've read in years. Brian Wood is writing this book. The general synopsis is this is going to be the story of how the Rebels came to find a new base planet after Yavin was destroyed at the end of A New Hope. Yeah. Um, or after it was found out, I should say. It deals with a lot of really interesting stuff. You get to see Princess Leia flying around in an X-Wing. 
which, which is something we never saw in the movie. It tells a story that no one's ever told before. So yeah, I mean, you get to see a lot of Princess Leia, you get to see a decent amount of Luke, and it's cool to see Luke in an expanded universe book still as like a douchey adolescent. He's totally a force user, he knows he's gonna be a Jedi, but he's still like, my uncle and aunt parents are dead. It's a solid book, the art is fantastic. Han Solo's in it, doing his own thing on Coruscant, whatever. His Which is great, is. yeah, seeing Han on Coruscant. It was um, really cool. It's got all the classic imagery of the original trilogy of Star Wars, but it's a story that hasn't been told yet. And there was really some some funny, amazing dialogue between Leia and Luke. They go to Tatooine, and they're at the graves of Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. So it's a very emotional yeah. conversation between him and Leia that, that really hits home. Yeah, it definitely does things. I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, if you've watched the movies, even if you've read some of the other Expanded Universe stuff, yeah. this is a story that everybody should read as a Star Wars fan because it's... It's just a very personal story. Yeah. There's you 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 get to, you know, shrink the universe down a little bit and see these people in their everyday lives. Yep. Brian Wood's dialogue is exactly what how it should totally, be. Yeah. You know, like this is the Han Solo you saw in the movie. The, and the interactions between Han Solo and Chewbacca, I mean, like it's classic, just I, great. You know, I'm, yeah. when I read it, I, like I hear Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford, and I in, hear in Mark my head. Hamill. Yes, and I hear Carrie Fisher. Like it, it it's, there's no way it's not well, to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, and it's not just because the art. You know, like, I know it's this character, it's because he's writing the dialogue well. Right. I, I, I do like this person doing the pencils. We had Carlos DeAnda doing them for a long time, and I really liked his art. Ryan Kelly, yeah. I mean, these these pencils are perfect. The pencils are It, it is amazing. Yeah, I don't know that I'm doing this justice, to be honest. I probably did it more justice when it first came out. You know, seven issues in, it's solidified as it's one of the books every month that I am waiting for impatiently. Just in the end, and it doesn't spoil anything, it's just something that I wanted to mention because it's funny. Uh, Leia, Leia's flying off again to complete this mission to find Hoth, what we know will be Hoth. And the dialogue says, without much of a second thought, she leaves the fleet behind, free of everything but her one overriding mission, to find safe harbor for her friends. And then the little box at the bottom says, next, no safe harbor. Like, it's Silver Age as hell. Yeah, it's like right there. <laughs> like it it just, wasn't like even on the next page. Smacks, yeah, it wasn't even right like you had to turn a page. It was right there below that same dialogue bubble. Um, the Trade, Walking Dead, Volume 1, Days Gone By. It's one of the books that got me back into comics, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's one of the books that made me explore independent titles, yeah. which was yeah. something that I hadn't done. Long time, I was strictly a cape guy. I have a reading. painful love affair with this book. And it's not painful, <laughs> painful because- Painful love affair. It's, yeah, man. It's not painful, <laughs> it's not painful because, look, like I want the book to be good and it's bad. It's painful because it plays with my emotions. Tony Moore was the original penciler on the book. Um, Charlie Adlard is the guy we've all come to know his and faces, love. His faces were a lot more cartoony. But. This story itself, I mean, it's just, as an introduction to this world, there is yeah. no better first six issues of any book I've read in a long time. It's fantastic, yeah. I mean, every element that you need to know going into the next volume is presented to you here. Basic thing, guy wakes up in a hospital and nobody's there. Sounds like 28 Days Later. It's nothing like 28 no. Days Later. It's the ultimate fear. I mean, you just, you you wake up, no one's there, your machines are, you know, you're, you're Drip is empty, your machines are the all flowers, dead. The flowers, the flowers are, are dead. Bit. What they have to do here is grip you right away. I yeah. mean, you're, you're presented with a guy who doesn't know what's going on, and you're figuring it out as he's figuring it yeah. out. And he's trying to find his family, and he, he finds some other people that are still alive and starts to understand this world, and it's just, it's messed up, man. Like, it's... It is, it's really messed up. We can't pretend that you don't know what Walking Dead is, but we can pretend that you don't know what Walking Dead is as a comic. You don't like zombies, okay, it's a melodrama, and it's a really good melodrama. You do like zombies, cool, it's a better take on zombies than just about anything. Well, yeah, and, and I think the one thing that's more relevant than anything else about Walking Dead that you can talk about is just the human side of things. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all about it's all about human experience. I mean, Kirkman himself has said in interviews, The Walking Dead doesn't refer to the zombies. The title does not refer to zombies. That refers to the people that are still alive, walking around just waiting to die. It's so much more about people reacting to catastrophe and complete social breakdown than it is about zombies specifically. Zombies are just a catalyst. The human element is what antagonizes most of the main characters. Yeah, it even, is if the, it's the, even if it's it not the, another person, it's the emotions. fighting between the yeah. group. I mean, it is, it's very much what the zombies what are people, just a distraction. Yeah, what people become when yeah. society no longer exists. Breaks down, yeah, and absolutely. And it's, it's fantastic. I mean, that's one of my favorite kind of stories. I don't know, you, you, you get to know all the characters, and it gets to the point where, like, I mean, like, month to month, I'm like, what's going to happen to Rick this time? You know? Yes. I, I, like, it's... 
I, you know, I'm invested in this book at this point. Right. And uh, there's not a lot of books that that happens to me with. Every single trade, you get to the end and you can't wait to see yep. what's going to happen next. I mean, it always leaves you and wanting more. That's how it more. is with every issue is how yeah, I Every feel single issue now. does that too. I don't go a month miss and missing and miss this book. Like, there's, no, yeah. there's never a month that I've missed this book since I caught up. Yeah. We've been talking, you know, about the things that make Walking Dead awesome as a whole, but this story in particular, it really does a good job of introducing the world to you, even if yeah. you know nothing about it. Even if you've never read a, something, read a book about zombies or watched a movie about zombies, I mean, it does a very good job of helping you understand things very quickly. I mean, it's relevant that I say that this is the 14th printing of this particular yeah. trade. And, and it's been in the top 100 trades for how many years now? <sighs> Just year after year, top 100 trade always, sales. Volume one, and that's not, that's not every other trade that's come after it. That is volume one of Walking yeah. Dead is still one of the number one sellers. It's $14.99, but it's still worth it is still every worth penny. Every single penny. Yeah, I mean, like it is it is a fantastic story. So don't feel intimidated by how much there is with this book. There's 112 issues right now. Don't feel intimidated by it. Pick it up anyway. Yeah. Because I guarantee you you'll burn through it. Like you will yeah. read it faster than anything you've ever read. I caught up. Like I read like 50 issues in a period of two weeks. <laughs> And like that sounds outrageous, but anybody who's ever picked up one of the Walking Dead compendiums, it's about like this. People tend to finish those in like two weeks. Yeah, and they come because back because you looking cannot for the next put one. them down. Oh, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. Walking Dead uh, Volume One. It's issues one through six. It's Fifteen bucks. That's a credible deal because you're not going to find issues one through six in single form anymore. Ever. Yeah. If you do, without spending if you do, like yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. Literally tens so, of thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. That is literally how much money you for have a to ten spend. year old book. <laughs> right. Um, so check it out, man. It's on my shelf. We restock it it's, constantly. Yeah, it's, it's, if it's this not on our shelf, always, it will be. It will, it be, will be in a couple later weeks. that week. Yeah, it's yeah. always on a restock every time they're gone. So, uh, yeah, Walking Dead Volume One, Days Gone By, absolutely a good, good yeah, read. Pick it up. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, yeah. Ranting, going crazy. Thanks for watching our show. Please, yeah. Leave your comments below. We love to hear about them. We'll see you next week. And cut. <laughs>